Hi, Derek Rougeau here with Rougeau Knives, and as I mentioned in uh, the last video, um, I just want to be clear that this is not the definitive, definitive method of heat treating these steels. Uh, so just throwing that disclaimer out there. This was just a test. I'm trying to focus on um, trying to get more of a spring temper out of these steels, and I'm still experimenting and still trying out different methods. But this gives just gives you a, a general idea of what's involved. Um, and that's mainly the reason why I do these videos. All right, so thanks and enjoy the video. Hello, Derek here with Rougeau and Eyes. And uh, this video, I am torture testing two different types of steels, 1095 and 5160. So we'll do a comparison. I've been meaning to do this for a while. Um, however, I did temper these down to the low 50s because I'm looking at... Um, um, machete and short sword steels and the tempers to use for those. Um, the blades are 3 16 inches thick and they're ground from edge to spine, flat grind. Um, let's see, I hardest tested them. So right now the see, 5160 is a hardness of 51 to 52 and the 1095 is a hardness of 53 to 54. Now, I went ahead and videotaped me making these, and then the heat treating process, the tempering process, and then also hardness testing. So if you stick around at the end of the video, I'll, uh, I'll show you that footage. So let's start torture testing. So this test is um, cutting hemp rope. And I, had a, I have a full strand here, but it's easier just to break it down into these single strands. Um, and instead of trying to do this, let's see what I'm going to use the edge about right here. Like that every time. My hand's going to wear out really fast, so what I do is stick it on there and use a mallet. And then what I want to do is I want to focus on the same spot on the blade, so right in this area. As you can see, that's going to take a while, so I'll get back to you. Okay, so each knife I cut through the hemp rope um, 60 times within the same area. So now let's take it over to the my workbench and check under some better light and see if there's any damage to the edge. Okay, so I've inspected the edges under some good light, and um, the 5160, that's 57 on the hardness, the edge held up really well, didn't dull, still sharp, no chipping or bending. Um, the 5160, at a lower hardness, it held up really well as, um, it held up really well. And, uh, you know, because it's a little softer, it looked like it, nah, just a very little bit, your edge started to dull a little bit. Then the 1095, which has been tempered way down, so that's at a, um, a low hardness. This one showed signs of dulling, um, but no chipping. You know, it wouldn't chip because it's not that hard. It would bend rather than chip, and it's just starting to dull a little bit. But it's still sharp. I mean, it's, it's still going to cut. So there's the rope test. So, uh, yeah, the 5160 obviously is a little bit better, um, but 1095 still makes it, it's, it's still a good steel. Okay, the next test is cutting through a 2x4. Um, this is so light that it's going to take me forever to try to chop through it, so I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to really abuse it by pounding it with a sledgehammer through it.
over. Alright, I'm going to do the other blades. Okay, so I'm finished pounding these blades through a 2x4 um, all the way through um, using a sledgehammer. And, um, you know, just keep in mind that that's, that's really abusing the edge and the knife a lot to do that. I mean, you're pounding and you're not always hitting it square on, so sometimes you hit at an angle, so it's torquing the edge into the wood like that. Um, with a lot of force, but that's what we want. We want to we want to abuse it and see uh, what, what we get So I've inspected the edges of these knives and uh, Let's see here 1095 um, Held up really well. There's no chipping that I can see um, And it stayed pretty sharp um, The softer 5160, there were a few dents and little chips taken out of the edge. It's still sharp, but it did take some chips out and dented the edge a little bit. I'm um, hearing there, little micro dents. And then um, the hardened 57 hardness on the 5160 here. Um, a little dulling and a little bit of chipping. In real, yeah, it's like little burrs poked up from the force. But it's still sharp. Anyways, so the 1095 held up really well. The 5160 held up well. Um, it did do a little damage to the cutting edge, you know, little microchips and bent, dents, uh, little burrs that popped up. Um, but that's kind of to be expected. I'm surprised that the 1095 held up as well as it did. So, there's that. So, I'm sure these dulled quite a bit, but let's check them out and see if we can get any... I didn't have it razor sharp to begin with. There we go. So that's 1095. 5160. That held up pretty good. So, you know, they're still sharp. I didn't put a razor edge on these things because I wanted to keep a, somewhat of a tough edge, um, an edge similar to how I did do a machete. But um, they're still cutting. Um, one of the other tests is stabbing. And uh, a lot of guys, they'll Actually, I had a guy go see me at a show, and he brought in a custom knife that he had bought, and the tip was broken off about that much. And he was a little surprised. He goes, this is a 5160, and the tip broke off. And I go, well, what were you doing with it? And he goes, well, I'm stabbing a tree and going like this. And I said, well, there you go. That's why it broke. Um, the knife maker that made the knife, he had did an edge quench, so it was hardened all the way up to here. Well, if you that means this tip of the knife is going to be hard. So if you start bending it extremely it's going to snap so um, 
you know, just that was just abuse on the, uh, the consumer's end uh, as to why it broke. But I like to test these by stabbing them into wood. See if I can snap the tip off. So was that five? There's 10 and no damage, no damage. And that was 10.95. Here's the spring tempered 5160. Yep, so they all held up. Next one. Okay, this is the 10.95 blade. So we're gonna see, try to bend it 45 degrees, so about like that, and then go 90. It's 45 degrees, like it sprung back nicely. Yeah, it's got a good spring to it. So now we're gonna go, gonna go 90. That's 90 degrees. And that has a nice spring in it. It didn't break. I heard some cracking, but I think that... I don't see any cracks in the blade. Held it well. Now we'll do the 5160. This is the spring tempered version, spring tempered uh, blade 5160. degrees and it sprung back pretty true yeah, looks good all right let's go 90. See where it broke at, but even with the spring temper, the 5160 broke. All right, this is the 5160 um, 57, which is your standard hardness for behind knife or anything like that. But it's not really, it's hard, so it's going to break. But we want to see how much flexibility it has. Sprung back nicely. Again. All right, let's go ninety.
Well, they're flexing quite a bit before they break. Not to look in the camera, but they, that was way over here. So that's quite a bend before it snaps. So, uh, there we have it. Okay, so here's some of the test blades. Um, these are the three that we just dealt with today. Um, and then this is the O1 tool steel blade that I did a bend test and I showed it to you. Uh, I posted a video on that. Um, so the 5160s, they ended up breaking. I looked on the camera and they broke it at about 75 degrees. That's quite a bend before it breaks. So, you know, if you're looking at buying a knife, I wouldn't worry about the fact that the 5160 broke when it was bent 75 degrees. Um, 5160 is my preferred steel. It holds a good edge. It's flexible. It's, there's a lot of pluses to it. It's a carbon alloy steel. 1095 is a simple carbon steel and um, there's different grades. There's 1085, 1070, and 60, 50 and they're mostly used for machetes and other stuff like that but the 1095 is um, used pretty heavily for knives and if it's heat treated correctly it can be used for machetes. Now this one, the 1095, that was had a low temper it flexed and didn't break. Um, so that's what you want for a machete. Now, on the other hand, if you were, want a hunting knife or anything like that, then you may want a harder knife where it will break. Um, some, now, there's a big debate about whether or not, when you're out in the field, do you want a bent knife to work with? Well, you can always try to straighten it. Or do you want a knife that breaks and now you got a handle and you got a blade, but you can still use this as a skinning tool. Um, you know, it's it's all about sacrificing one thing for another. Um, you want good edge retention, then go harder. If you want flexibility and toughness, you know, then you go softer. Um, I also had this 1095 blade here that broke. And this was a hardness of uh, 5960 and it broke at 40 degrees. So in comparison you know, we're looking at bending it at 40 degrees, this snapped, and then this broke at 75. So this had a much stronger um, and a much more flexible bend. This one, 1095 here, broke as well. This one was hardened. Now this one was pretty hard. This one was 61. I, I don't know why I kept it that hard. Um, and it broke at 60 degrees. So, one of the things I've noticed with 1095 is that it, when you heat treat it and then you hardness test it, there's a lot of variance within the steel. So you'll test one area, it may say 60, you test another area and it says 55. Where the 5160 doesn't do that. It, you test one area, it says 60, you test another area, it may drop to, you know, 57, maybe 56. So it's a much narrower range when you're um, with the, the evenness of the grain compared to the 1095. So um, let's see here. This one here is 1095 as well with an edge quench. Um, I bent it 90 degrees and it sprung back pretty well so that you have you know your flexibility um, but you have a hard edge. And then, um, let's see, this was the 6150 that I made my tomahawks out of, so that was the test piece I did for that. 5160 is my preferred steel, but I'm going to be making some machetes. I'll probably go 1095, try to keep the price down, plus it's strong, it's tough. It did, you know, through my tests here, it held up really well. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Anyways, that's the only reason I do in these videos is I'm not trying to do a tutorial and teach you how to do knife making. There's a lot of knife makers out there that do some really um, good videos and step-by-steps. You know, support those guys. Go out and buy their DVDs. Um, I'm sure they would appreciate it. The only reason I'm getting into this stuff is just to give you an idea of the extent of the complexity of heat, heat treating and also the extent I take to make sure that I'm hitting my target hardnesses. I'm testing these different steels. I'm testing different hardnesses. Um, heat treating is one of the most important aspects of knife making. And uh, if you're not getting it right, then you're just making, uh, you know, a piece of junk. 
So, um, anyways, there you have it. Thanks again for watching.